If you've been feeling that your views are down, your engagement is down, and you're just completely lost on what's happening with your content, this episode is for you. I'm going to drop some really good gems, so come on in. Let's get started. Welcome to the Unstuck Podcast. I'm your host, Drew Koss, and today I'm going to give you a formula that I've learned from uh, Donald Miller. <clears throat> portion of this is from... Uh, Justin Walsh, and then a lot of it is from my own uh, trial and error, which is a lot of trial and error. So let's just get into this episode of these content headaches, what's happening with views and engagement, and just the confusion in in general. So we want to think right now, Instagram is a business. Facebook is a business. Even LinkedIn, they're, they're a business. They want people to stay on those platforms. So Instagram wants people to stay on those platforms, Facebook, and even TikTok and things like that. With that being said, because it's a business, it's going to lend itself first to the people who pay to play. So if you're not running any ads and things like that, I don't currently run any ads. I'm not against it. If you're not currently running ads, you have to think they're going to put the reach at the people who are paying right now, they're paying to get more leads. They're paying to get more eyes on their page and things like that. That does not mean you're doomed. I'm just letting you know what it is. Instagram is a business. So with that being said, with that being said, we want to now look at, because it's a business, they're going to lend first their uh, magic wand to the people who are paying the most engagement. I usually like to say with engagement, ask yourself, Do you engage with other people's content or do you just like, and then that's it. Or you just share and that's it. Do you go and engage? Do you go and leave comments and go and ask questions and things like that? With that being said, I'm going to give you a formula that I've learned from Donald Miller, right? Now I'm going to also give you a disclaimer. I do not work with Donald Miller. I would love to, I would love to actually become a guide, which is about 12 K and I, yeah, I would love to, let's just leave it like that. So you, you have to look at your content like this. The hero is the person that's the customer. That's the hero. You're not the hero. You're the guy. The hero is the customer. So their customer has a problem. The hero has a problem. The story is not exciting. If there's no problem, when you watch a movie, if you watch the movie and the superhero went to go save a child and there was no friction. There was no villain. It wouldn't be fun to watch. It'd be kind of boring. So every movie, if you think about movies, always has a hero, always trying to solve a problem. And there's usually always a villain, always a villain. And then there's a guide. So the hero is the customer. That's the hero. Number two, the hero has a problem. Your customer is the hero. Your customer has a problem. The problem is usually the solution that you have or the unique way of solving this problem that you have. So the hero, the problem, and then the hero meets what's called a guide. If we look at one of the famous movies, um, let's just say um, the Karate Kid, the Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi is the guide. Daniel is the hero. Daniel has a problem every single series with the Karate Kid. One of them is he's new to the neighborhood. He's getting bullied and beat up. He has to go and beat this kid to get respect. Another time he has to go beat somebody else who's like a natural killer. Every story has a a villain or a problem. So now when we look at it like that, your client is a hero. They have a problem. You're the guide. When the hero meets the guide, they both look at this problem and the guide ends up giving the hero a solution or a roadmap to solve that problem. Mr. Miyagi, if we're thinking about the story with the Karate Kid, is he gives Daniel the solution, which is to start training, to start learning karate and to start learning emotional maturity because you can't just go spaz out and use that. And then after that, there comes a time now where you have to be tested. Daniel has had got to the test where he has to eventually fight the guy in the karate tournament 
your client will actually get to the test where you've given them the blueprint, you give them the strategy. Now they got to go ahead and solve their own problem with the solution that you gave them. Still with me? So let's recap real quick. First part is the hero. That's your client. They have a problem. That's number two. You are the guide. That's number three. Number four, you're going to provide them with a solution or a strategy or however you give your clients um, the solution. It may be a program. It may be a workshop. It may be a webinar. However you do it, you're giving them the solution. But it's up to them to decide if they're going to go ahead and take the solution. Now, the next part is the part that I love a lot is something is at stake. What happens if they go ahead and go and execute the plan? And then what happens if they do not execute the plan? There is something that does have to happen. Something has to happen. The person, the hero has to go take the action or don't, they don't take the action. If they don't take the action, something happens bad to them. One of the ways to look at this story too, is the last, not the last one, but the Batman uh, movie, the dark Knight rises, Batman is done. He's done with being Batman. The cops can't control the city. And there's a villain that comes up named Bane. Bane is trying to restore what he calls uh, justice to the League of Shadows. And when he gets there, Batman is alerted that we need you. We need your help. Batman comes out and he encounters a problem. The problem that he encounters is he hasn't been working out for a while. So a lot, a lot of injury has happened. Bane is, is ready to take over. But the thing that happens is Batman needs to save Gotham. The problem is Batman needs to save Gotham, needs to save Gotham. The villain also is Bane and Bane does not want to let him save it. So Bane does everything in his power to make sure he doesn't get it right. Long story short, throughout the movie, Bane ends up meeting Batman. He has to fight him and he loses. Bane puts him in jail in a dungeon where he grew up at and Batman has another problem and he needs to get out of the dungeon. This is a really cool part. If you ever, if you've never seen the Dark Knight Rises, just go watch this part when Batman is in the cave and he's doing pushups and pull-ups to get out. So Batman's like, all right, I'm the hero. The problem is I got to get out of this cell so I can go save Gotham, right? Bane is not there at this moment, but Bane's out in Gotham causing havoc. So Batman's like, my people are messed up because of me being down here. I need to get out. Batman meets a guide in the cell. The cell is this old guy. There's two old men. One is telling Batman, why are you building yourself up? Batman's like, you know, because I'm about to go save Gotham. This old guy tells him, you lack the one thing that humans have. And he said, um, what's that? He said, you're afraid to die. And Batman's like, I'm, I'm not afraid of that. I'm, I'm, I am fearful. And he said, well, then make the climb. He tells him to make the climb. And with the climb, he tells him, make the climb like the child did. At first, Batman was trying to solve the problem with his own way of doing it, which was climbing up this rope. And when that happened, he ended up falling back. Get to the place now where he's telling him, I have a different solution for you for the same exact problem. He ends up climbing the way the child did. He gets out and he gets to go and save Gotham. All of that to say, you want to think about your client being the hero and them having a problem and you having the solution. Now, how do I get to let them know that I have a solution? I need to be able to solve some of their problems even through my content. If you're not problem solving for people, they're probably, probably not going to pay you attention unless they're close friends with you. And when we look at content, we usually look at, I just want to put things out. I just want to throw something out there. You can do that. You could probably see some success with that. But you want to start thinking, what problems am I solving that the hero or the, the customer wants solved? It would have been foolish for Batman, for his, his butler to be like, hey, you need a, a, a new color. You need a red suit now. That wasn't the problem that he needed solved right then. Or you need to go back and train harder. 
that wasn't the problem he needed solved at that time. And that's what happens usually with content. If you're putting out a lot and no one's responding, you're probably not solving a problem that people want solved. Or you're probably not solving a problem that people are ready to actually pay you for to solve for them. So I want to leave you with this. The hero is the customer. The problem is what they know they have. You're the guide. You're not the hero. You're the guide. You're going to give them your program, which is maybe a strategy, a call, a workshop, whatever your program is. They're going to have to decide if they're going to take action on that. And then there's something at stake if they do or do not. And usually they end up taking the action, end up saving the city, end up saving the fight, winning the fight, end up getting the girl, whatever the final outcome is based on your story. So think about content like that. It might have seemed like it's a lot of work, but if you start framing your mind to the simple thing, that person has a problem. I have a solution. I got to get the solution to them. They got to take action. You'll be good. Go be great.